If someone you love is diagnosed with cancer or a life-threatening disease, you may feel helpless and you may not know how to help or what to say. With some advice on what to say and what not to say is our health expert, Dr. Marjorie. <laughs> we're talking about this because I think it might help on both sides to have an open conversation about the the, the things we should be saying and what we're actually saying that is yeah, not helpful. That's not helpful and I think that the important thing to remember is in, in any communication the people who are coming really are coming with good intentions yeah I believe mm -hmm. so the people who are your caregivers your family even your physicians we in as we train for medicine I took a course called the art of medicine understanding your patients okay, okay. so it was 25 years ago <laughs> but when you're a doctor you learn how to deliver information to patients yes and you learn that they are coming from their perspective and understanding and feeling you can't walk a mile in people's shoes right yeah you're there to help them and even then we make a mess of the situation. So you kind of learn to understand that what you're saying is not necessarily what the other person hears. Right. But then if you're mindful of where they're coming from, then it makes you deliver your message differently. Yes. And also on the other end of the person who is managing their life with illness, they understand what their triggers are and will be able to communicate clearly what they would prefer you not say. So I think having the conversation, keeping everybody honest about where they're coming from, where they're going, makes it easier. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a good little primer right now. So mm. the one thing that someone might say uh -huh. uh, that is not helpful is what? Well, at least you don't have that illness, like mm. XYZ illness. Yes. Okay, so because that would be way worse. That would be way worse. Right? What do people hear when you say that? You don't think that my illness is a valid thing? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So even though they weren't trying to diminish what the person is afflicted with, that's how it gets interpreted, right? So it minimizes or diminishes. It makes it they're not really acknowledging that they are struggling. What could you say instead? So there are a lot of things that people can say, but yeah. instead of assuming that you would rather have this than something else, maybe, you know what, when you feel ready, and if you want to share, please share with me. I'm here for you to support you. Mm -hmm. right? Keep it real open. Keep it open because actually sometimes even people living with illness, so you said cancer, it could be cancer, but it can be other things. There are chronic things in medicine, diabetes, mm -hmm. infertility. My fertility patients talk about how difficult it is to communicate with their friends and family around them because they don't validate that their fertility struggles are real. That's right. So it, it is the whole gamut of things that people are dealing with in a chronic fashion that needs to be addressed. And you're basically saying uh, however much you want to say or not say, or not say. whenever you want to or not want to, exactly. you tell me, you drive the ship, yes, and I'm just here for you. Exactly. We live in the era of overshare online, everywhere yeah. people say, but you know what? People might keep things close to their chest, and you may not know anything about really what they're dealing with. Right. Yeah. Another thing, a second thing that someone might say uh, wrong to someone who's suffering an illness is, uh, you're going to beat this, that's for sure. You're going to beat this. You're going to beat this. Absolutely. What does the person hear? Well, do you know anything about my medical record? Mm -hmm. There might have been a key piece of information that they're keeping to themselves that they're not sharing. There's a lot of stigma around illness and chronic illness that people won't give details of. Yes. So they just really feel like, All right, did you get access to my medical record? Did you talk to my caregiver? Did they tell you what I told them not to tell you? Yeah. It becomes a little bit of... This is my private situation and information I don't want to share. Yes. And so, again, what you can say in lieu of that, so yeah. instead of saying you're going to beat this, that's for sure, you would say something like, I know that you've been private about this and I'm here to support you in any way that I can. Yeah. If you want to share, great. If you don't want to share any details, I'm still here for you. Right. And I think the other thing about the you're going to beat this is you sort of assume culpability. I know that we're going to we're going to talk a little bit more about that yeah. later, but yeah. What if it's not up to me whether I beat it or not? Like, yeah. is it my fault then if I didn't beat it? Like, is there something I could have done better to beat it? Exactly. Or are you not doing everything possible right. in your power, right? So there's a degree of culpability, which shouldn't yeah. be there, right? right? You are waiting for your medical professionals to help you, and maybe there are some days where you don't feel that you can be, and that's okay. And that's okay, too. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's um, talk about the, uh, another thing that people might say that is not very helpful. What is it? The third thing on your list. So, should you be eating that? <laughs> <laughs> just don't even say that to anybody ever. Like, that's a, that should be like How a cardinal that? sin Like, period. just don't say that. But people say it all the time. And that's when the patients will tell me, like, yeah. so, um, you know when you are struggling with something that certain things are not good for you. I, 
I love lots of foods that are really bad for me. Mm -hmm. And as a physician, I often feel like I can't eat the stuff that I really like publicly because people will be like, did you Should see what Dick thing was it, right? Now, I don't have chronic illness. Yes. But if people are struggling, it doesn't mean that they might not every now and then crave something that's not ideal for their illness. And what right? are they hearing when you say, should you be eating that? Oh, I'm making myself worse. Like, yeah. oh yeah, it's you my think fault. that uh, it's my fault. This is what I'm saddled with. I did this to myself mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're judging me. You're being a judge. What should you say? So I really enjoy food preparation and are there any foods that make you feel really good or worse and, and can I help you with that? Yeah. Can I get them for you? Yeah. So it, it allows the person to help you empower them as they're making their choices. And then there'll be days where people just say, I want McDonald's even though it's really awful. And you have to be like, that's Do it. cool. It's That's today. Right. It makes it happen. So the theme here with all of the tips is make sure you are always there to provide support and stand away from judgment nope. because they will exactly. hear judgment. Marjorie, no thank you for and that. And don't assume malintent. People are good generally. They're trying to help. Yeah. 